there, and welcome to the Pets Aplenty channel. Making a selection between the Coton de Tular and the Havanese can be pretty challenging, as both breeds are outstanding in their unique ways. We understand this challenge, so don't worry, because as usual, we've got you covered here on Pets Aplenty. Today on the channel, we've gathered all the helpful information about these breeds to help you make the ultimate choice on the dog which gets that particular spot in your home with a nine-round battle that covers all aspects of life from their history to their health. Before we continue though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets Aplenty membership after clicking the join button. Alright, here we go. Coton de Tular versus the Havanese. Let's start the fight. Round 1. History a quick research into the lineage of the Coton de Tular and the Havanese tells us that they're related. For starters, the Havanese and the Coton de Tular share a common ancestor with the Bijan family, which originated from Tenerife dogs. The Havanese, named after Cuba's capital city, was formerly a staple on the laps of Cuba's elite. It's believed that Spanish sailors brought this little yet entertaining breed to Cuba in the 1500s. Many Havanese have made their way to the United States in the late 90s. 1950s, courtesy of Cuban refugees seeking asylum. In fact, the HCA claims that all modern-day Havanese dogs, except those in Cuba, can be traced back to a group of 11 puppies that made the journey with their owners. The AKC recognized the breed in 1996. The origins of the cotton sound like something out of a fairy tale. The story begins with a shipwreck off the coast of Tular, Madagascar, where it's claimed that no humans survived, but a pack of little white dogs made it to shore alive. Dogs who made it to land bred with indigenous canines to produce the adorable cottons we know today. Despite their storied history, pinpointing the precise origins of this adorable canine breed is difficult. What is known for sure is that the aristocrats of Madagascar were so taken with cottons that they legislated against anyone other than themselves owning one. The breed prospered in secrecy for generations, thanks to the owner's decision to hoard their puppies. Emerging onto the international arena, only after they were discovered by French tourists in the 60s. Cottons are now bred in Europe and North America. The cotton gained AKC approval in 2014. Although these two popular breeds have similar origin stories, each dog has its own distinct characteristics and personality that have evolved over time. We've come to the end of this round, and they both get one point each for their history. Round 2. Appearance while both species have voluminous, long hair, the texture and care they need are different. The Havanese has a double coat that can be silky, fluffy, curly, wavy, or straight. Long and straight cotton coats are prone to dryness. While cottons usually only come in white, yellow, and champagne, Havanese come in a wide variety of coat colors, including black, reddish-brown, fawn, white, Havana brown, and tobacco. Size-wise, there is hardly any difference between the breeds. According to ideal breeds, breed standards, the Havanese is marginally the smaller of the two. The Havanese and the cotton reach their full adult height of around 12 inches. The adult Havanese weighs in at 7 to 14 pounds, while the cotton is 12 to 15 pounds. So, cuddling with either of them won't put a stain on your lap. Both dogs look like twins, are soft and cute, and each gets a point on the scoreboard. Two points for the cotton de Tular and two for the Havanese. Round 3. Grooming the grooming requirements for these breeds are commonly understood to be between moderate and high. Their gorgeous coats overgrow, so regular trims are necessary to keep them from getting matted and tangled. They'll also need to be brushed multiple times per week and washed once every two weeks. Because of their size, these dog breeds are especially vulnerable to eye infections and tear stains. Their pale fur does nothing to hide the blemishes. Cleaning your dog's face and using wipes or solutions to remove tear stains will assist. In addition, you should clean their ears, trim their nails, and inspect them for ticks and fleas regularly just as you would with any other dog. Undoubtedly, shedding is one of the drawbacks of owning a dog. 
Be careful to think about this when deciding on the best breed for you and your family. The Coton de Tulear and the Havanese are excellent choices if you'd like a dog that doesn't shed excessively. These dog breeds consistently rank high on lists of low-shedding canines. Whether you need a dog that thrives in extreme heat or cold is dependent on your location. The Coton de Tular and the Havanese are two dog breeds that do well in hot climates, but you should still use caution. Avoid the heat by going out early or late at night and providing shade and water. Also, avoid pavement because paws can't stand on hot ground for more than a few seconds. Some dogs may be uncomfortable in temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, but this is rare for most breeds. When temperatures drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, tiny breed, thin-coated, young, old, or unwell dogs should be closely monitored. When temperatures drop below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, owners should know their dogs could experience hypothermia and frostbite. Fortunately, both breeds are cold tolerant. They'll be fine and may even enjoy the cold. Both breeds need constant attention, but the cotton is more of the prima donna of the two, so the Havanese prevail in this round. It's three points to two for the cotton. Round four, temperament. Making a blanket generalization about a breed's temperament is difficult. A dog's behavior can be affected by a wide range of events and, in turn, by the dog's unique temperament. Searching for the ideal family dog? You can't go wrong choosing a Cotton de Tular or a Havanese as a companion dog. Their gregarious nature and warm demeanor make them a fantastic fit for households. Both are pretty affectionate with their families, so they'll be quickly accepted. Cotton de Tulars are typically people-oriented, friendly, dogs who enjoy mingling with their human companions. They're sociable and easy to train, so they'll make great show animals. A Coton de Tular is a dog like any other. They generally don't bark a lot, but can bark when they feel like it. Both breeds are highly sociable and enjoy spending time with their human families. They're both kind and tolerant with kids, but the Coton de Tular is generally more well-behaved when around children. Although canines in general are wonderful, not every breed is well-suited to city life. Because of their size, activity level, loudness, scent, and shedding, some dog breeds are more unsuitable than others for apartment living. Fortunately, Havanese and Coton de Tular have a reputation for being suitable apartment dogs. Your family's lifestyle should be considered when adopting a new pet. The Coton de Tular and the Havanese do not do well when left alone for lengthy periods. They have separation anxiety and perform best with someone at home most of the day. Some dog owners, like a garden dog, while others desire a sociable dog. Expecting a Coton de Tular or Havanese to act protectively against an uninvited guest is asking too much unless they've been trained to do so. Even though they are both loving and cuddly breeds, the Coton seems to have a disposition that is generally more playful, sociable, and appealing than the Havanese. One point each for this round. Round 5. Socialization all dogs, even the two breeds we've described here, can benefit significantly from early and consistent socialization. If well socialized, these breeds' temperaments and behaviors are similar, so they get a point each. Four for the Cotton, four for the Havanese. It's a tie again, folks. Round 6. Trainability Obedience training is necessary for all dogs, although some breeds are simpler to train than others. Both types of dogs are very trainable and may pick up new skills quickly. Dogs like Havanese and Cottons are easy to train since they're eager to please their owners, unlike more independent breeds. Early training and socialization are crucial for their development, but be sure to keep them interested and engaged in the process. Remember the three pillars of dog training, patience, persistence, and consistency, and keep them in mind if you decide to adopt one of these dogs. The Havanese are great to train as they quickly learn to connect verbal cues with physical responses. So, it gets the point for this round. It's five points to four for the Cotton. The Havanese currently maintain a slender lead. Do they have what it takes to pull off the ultimate victory? What happens in the following rounds will be telling. Let's proceed. Round 7. Exercise Physical activities make dogs healthy, quiet, and happy. Active dogs are healthier, happier, and less destructive. Both breeds have average exercise needs. Most days of the week, they'll need 30 to 60 minutes of aerobic activity. And no, walking on a leash isn't a strenuous aerobic activity. Instead, the aerobic exercise causes your dog to pant. We believe they deserve a point each for this round. It's 7 points to 6 for the cotton. Round 8. Diet and Nutrition 
Hotonda Tular and Havanese dogs require roughly half a cup to one cup of dry dog food per day split between two meals. Both breeds tend toward obesity and its associated health risks. Therefore, owners shouldn't offer their pets table scraps or leave out a bowl of kibble for their pets to eat whenever they're hungry. However, treats should be provided sparingly. If your dog is active regularly, you can increase the portion. They get a point each for this round for their similarity in diet. With the Havanese still taking the lead, it's eight points to seven for the cotton. Round nine, health. While you can't predict or guarantee a dog's lifespan due to genetics, lifestyle, and health, breed history can give you a decent indication. The easiest approach to ensure the health of your new puppy is to perform some background research on reliable breeders and then, when you meet them, inspect their facilities and request to see the health certifications for the parents. The average lifespan of a Havanese or a Cotton is between 14 and 16 years. Deafness, limb and hip problems, cataracts, and progressive retinal degeneration are all common in Havanese. Although the Havanese are known for their resilience, the cotton appears to have fewer breed-specific health issues. The cotton takes the point for the final round, and the results are tied at eight points each. It only took the cotton one burst of dog power to catch up and tie the score. We'd love to conclude by saying every human has a choice. It's vital to consider your personal needs and environment during adoption. However, it's always worth knowing about the similarities and differences between these breeds. Both dog breeds can work excellently as a pet or companions. This is our evaluation. Remember, yours may be different. In addition, before adopting a dog, do well to seek professional advice from the breeder and your veterinarian. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Let us know in the comments section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.